So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all of you. I, on behalf of uh, the College of Banking and Financial Studies, would like to welcome you to the uh, ninth CBFS Research and Academic Virtual Engagement Webinar Series. Uh, meet the researchers. Uh, the theme of our uh, Meet the Researchers today is uh, Pathways to Research Success Insights from Emerging Scholars. So uh, we are delighted to have two prominent speakers among us, uh, Professor uh, Satish Kumar and uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Bashiru Jibril. Uh, however, I am sure that you are going to have an exciting session and uh, learn a lot from these two eminent speakers uh, about, about the ways to successful publications. Without further ado, I would like to invite our Honorable Dean of the College, uh, Dr. Zaharan Al Salthi, to deliver his welcome address. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Anand. Thank you, Dr. Dilal. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Um, very good afternoon. Maybe, I don't know, good morning to some of you. Uh, uh, um, it's really a great pleasure to welcome you all uh, for the Meet the Researcher webinar that the College of Banking and Financial Studies is organizing today. And first of all, I'm pleased to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished uh, speakers for this webinar, uh, Professor Satish Kumar and uh, also Dr. Abdul Bashir Jibril. So we are um, thankful uh, for both for agreeing to share their vast experience and knowledge uh, in, in scientific research. Uh, today's also webinar is being attended. I can see it's almost more than uh, 57 uh, participants, uh, faculty, researchers, students from Oman and also um, and beyond. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to all all of them. Uh, uh, this event basically is uh, uh, is a milestone in our ongoing commitment to excellence in education, research, and community engagement. Uh, this ninth webinar uh, is under our international, is conducted under our international webinar series uh, uh, and is part of our knowledge transfer initiatives uh, that we are doing here in the College of Banking and Financial Studies, CBFS. Of course, our main goal here is to provide a platform for uh, emerging scholars to share their insights, experience, to young researchers and other colleagues from all over the world uh, on, on, on scientific research. And uh, uh, this is also part of our commitment to support uh, uh, research excellence uh, in the college and in the country also. So uh, once again, uh, a warm welcome to our distinguished speakers. And also um, I'm, I'm extending the welcome to all uh, the uh, uh, attendees who are uh, uh, managed to, you know, register and attend this webinar from all over the world. Uh, so I wish you a very fruitful and um, enriching uh, session. Uh, all the best. So it's back to you, Dr. Bilal. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Zaharan, for your well, warm welcome. So now I would like to invite the Assistant if, uh, Dean of the College of Banking and Financial Studies, uh, Dr. Yusuf Al Mapsali to deliver his uh, opening remarks. Thank you, Dr. Dalal. Dear esteemed key speaker, Professor Satish, and Dr. Abdul Bashir Jibril, esteemed delegates from across the globe, and my dear colleagues, good afternoon to you all. Today's events, today's events hold tremendous significance as we come together to celebrate the achievement and contribution of emerging scholars in the field of research. It is a testament to our commitment for the talent and fostering innovation and advancing knowledge in our prospective domain. Through engaging discussion and collective exchanges, we aim to explore diverse perspectives, methodologies, and innovation that drive impactful research outcomes. By connecting our participants 
collective wisdom and expertise, we can uncover new insight, inspire transformative ideas, and pave the way for future research events. As we embark on this journey of exploring and discovery, I encourage you to approach this webinar with an open mind and a spirit of collaboration. Our speakers today represent the vanguard of research excellence and their insights and experience are invaluable from which we can all learn. I would like to express my heartfelt to our distinguished speakers for sharing their time, expertise, and passion with us today. I would also like to appreciate the postgraduate studies, research, and innovation department for the hard work and dedication in bringing this event to true. So in the spirit of collaboration and knowledge sharing, let us seize this opportunity to engage in a meaningful dialogue, exchange ideas, and inspire one another to reach a new height of excellence in our research event today. Once again, we welcome you all to the meeting of research to this and would expect that this webinar will be a great and fruitful for all of you. I wish you all a productive and enriching experience. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yusuf, for your nice opening remarks. Uh, it is inspiring as a lot. So now we are ready to uh, uh, on a year uh, for session one. The session one theme is building a strong research network, leveraging collaboration for success. And uh, the speakers today, we have uh, uh, none other than Professor Satish Kumar, who has uh, have a very uh, eloquent and versatile profile. Just let me introduce a bit uh, Professor Satish Kumar. Uh, he is a professor in finance and accounting and chairperson of PhD program in Indian Institute of Management, Nagpur. He has over 20 years of teaching and research experience at management institutes of repute in India and abroad. Professor Kumar has obtained his doctorate degree from IIT Roorkee in 2012. His, his research interest includes corporate finance, financial management, supply chain finance, small business finance, corporate governance, etc. Professor Kumar has over 20 research pub, uh, 250 research publications, mind blogging, uh, appearing in high ranked journals, including Contemporary Accounting Research, Review of Accounting Studies, Energy Economics, International Journal of Research and Marketing, Journal of Service Research, Jer British Journal of Management, Journal of Corporate Finance, just to name a few. He has actually a lot more I can actually cite today. Professor Kumar has supervised 11 PhD students and also completed six sponsored projects and consultancy services. So just a little announcement before I invite Professor Kumar. Just a reminder, if you want to ask any questions uh, to Professor Kumar, you can just put uh, the questions in the question and answer box, not in the chat box. There is a question and answer box on the MS Teams. You can just post your question there. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Professor Kumar. Uh, Professor Kumar, the virtual floor is yours, please. Any technical issue, Professor? You can unmute yourself first. Please unmute. Yes.
professor satish kumar please raise your hands i will make you presenter please Professor Kumar, can you please raise your hands? I will make you presenter. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. Here. Raise in the, the MS Teams. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please, one minute. Yes, done, Professor. Please go ahead. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Unmute, please. Yeah. yeah. We don't hear you. OK, OK, take your time, please. Okay, uh, Professor uh, Muhammad uh, Dulal. So uh, he yes. has got little issue. He will bring some technical person. We will go ahead with the Professor Abdullah. Then he will join later. Yeah. All right. So uh, okay. okay. So uh, it's fine. Uh, excuse us for the technical issues. So uh, we are now actually moving to the second uh, session. Uh, the second session will be uh, on the theme of. Uh, Overcoming challenges in research insights from seasoned scholars. So we are pleased to have today with us uh, Dr. Abdul Bashir Jibril. Uh, let me introduce a bit Dr. Jibril. Uh, he is an assistant professor of marketing at Rabat Business School. He received his PhD and MSc degrees both from Thomas Bata University from Czech Republic. Dr. Jibril currently teaches business strategy, strategic management, strategic marketing, and international marketing and business at both postgraduate and undergraduate levels. His research has been published in impacted and ABS ranked, including International Journal of Information Management, Cogent Business Management, Sustainability, etc., just to name a few. He has also participated and presented in numerous international scientific conference proceedings. His research interest includes the area of technology adoption in a developing country, consumer behavior and brand management, relationship marketing, social media marketing, and SMEs development. So uh, I, I would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Jibril. So the uh, virtual floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Dr. Mohammed, I hope you can hear me. Yes, clear, clear, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Before I start, let me also uh, clarify my 
updates of the profile you read. I am currently uh, in Tashkan, Uzbekistan. That's the International University of uh, Westminster International University. Uh, so currently not with uh, Rabat Business School in Morocco. So perhaps uh, uh, you might have my apologies. My... Oh, no yeah, problem, I took no it, uh, the information from the LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, 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 no problem. It's okay. okay. Uh, let me also uh, also uh, thank the organizers, uh, especially the Dean, Dr. Zaharan Sati, and then the coordinator, I mean, Dr. Anat, for inviting me to join this uh, memorable webinar series. So today I would like to share with you uh the 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 challenges that researchers always have to make themselves available before they can have a successful research journey uh <clears throat> let me also i mean reiterate that uh, i am originally from ghana i had my bachelor in economics and entrepreneurship and then after some time, I moved to Europe precisely in Czech Republic. That is where I did my PhD and my master's together. And I also engaged as a lecturer for three years and, and again, a uh, postdoctoral researcher in the same university before I then moved to Morocco. So <clears throat> let me move on. Uh, it is important to always understand that uh, the research journey is not always smooth. The research journey is not always smooth. So as aspiring researchers, or I mean, interested researchers who would like to join the academic fraternity, they need to be able to understand that there are many uncertainties that await them. And in as much as they want to navigate, or they want to still achieve the academic career, they need to know how to navigate in this demo. So in my presentation, we'll be looking at the how contemporary researchers or how early career researchers can identify and define their research challenges. And beyond that, after identifying the specific challenges that await them, uh, what are the also the strategies that they can use to overcome these challenges? And we should be also be looking at perhaps the experiences, case studies, experiences from seasoned scholars on how to manage such crisis in as much as they intend to navigate themselves to achieve their academic career. And then uh another important area that the researchers and academic institutions must pay attention is how they can cultivate a supportive research environment that can enable them to have i mean a better experience in their research journey then the last aspect has to do with possible i mean questions and answers so uh, it is important, like I said, it is important to understand that research is inherently a process of trial and error. One must understand that a research journey, it involves a process of trial and error. Despite, I mean, meticulous planning and execution, setbacks or challenges are common occurrences in the research journey. So it is also important as researchers or as aspiring researchers to also know that the, the, the research path is inherently uncertainty, is, is, is embedded with uncertainty due to various factors such as the evolving technologies, challenging trend or changing trend in the academic environment or changing trend in research ecosystem. And as well as unforeseen challenges that await with researchers. So it is important that early career researchers need to understand that, that 
uncertainty. Uncertainty is natural part of the research process. So if you are a researcher or you are a potential researcher or you are a PAD researcher and you you are able to make yourself or you you embrace yourself that uh, challenges or some obstacles are natural parts aspect of the research uh, journey you will be able to come out with an innovative ideas you will be able to embrace innovative ideas in a manner that would enable you to navigate yourself because it is important to also understand that in the research journey in the research journey all outcomes can cannot be entirely controlled. It is important to know that the outcome of research cannot be entirely controlled or predicted. So having this in mind, you should be able to know that your, your, your research journey or the project that you are pursuing is a trial and error. So in, in as much as you have these concepts in mind, it is a way of I mean, informing that these are the possible outcomes that you are likely to face. So knowing the possible outcome of your research journey uh, is a way of, I mean, I mean, giving you an idea in terms of how you can strategize yourself to penetrate through these intricacies. So by acknowledging these obstacles or constraints ahead, it enables scholars. It enables scholars to be able to, I mean, prepare themselves mentally, emotionally, in order to navigate through this uncertainty. So, understanding the research journey with respect to challenges that await researchers are a way of cushioning or energizing potential researchers to be able to have a successful or encounter. Uh, their, their way towards research journey. So when you look clearly, you could see that uh, there are several factors or several uh, uh, challenges that are confronted with researchers, such as even literature gap is a challenge for researchers. How researchers or, I mean, aspiring researchers can dig through can dive through the extant literature in order to establish even a research gap is a quite challenge. Are you getting it? Beyond, I mean, research gap being a challenge, we could also consider technological challenge over here. That is evolution of technology is changing the dynamics of research. Of late, we have several, I mean, old professors, or should I even say, I mean, experienced uh, uh, supervisors who are currently having challenges because of evolution of technologies. What they were doing in their past 20 years ago is not what we are doing with the new generation, not what we are doing now. So these are, I mean, evolution of technology has changed the dynamics, the trend, the ecosystem of research. So it is also important that to identify the specific uh, research challenge you should be able to know that as a researcher we have what is called internal challenges and then external challenges the internal challenges are basically those factors that has direct influence on the researcher such as availability of i mean uh resource materials i mean literature available for you to be able to tap through to, in order to be able to establish your research gap. I mean, you can also talk of expertise, having the knowledge required for you to be able to perceive that particular goal or that particular project is an internal challenge. You might have, I mean, perhaps thinking of applying for a particular project. However, your, the topic or the project call uh, may require certain level of expertise to be able to execute or implement this project. If you don't have the particular expertise, how will you be able to, I mean, apply or more or less pursue this particular uh, 
uh, a project. So you see that expertise is quite important. For example, you intend to, you've mm -hmm. gotten admission to embark on your PAD journey. And then mm -hmm. perhaps you know very well mm -hmm. that of late, not all, no. I mean, not all, I mean, supervisors have adequate time, especially within the beginning journey of the student. So most of the times, uh, students in their initial stage of PAD is a quiet, a robust, I mean, rough stage. So here, you need to do extra work. You, the student, don't always pay attention that my supervisor mm -hmm. is going to perhaps uh, uh, give me the ideas or will give me the, the, the needed information. Hello? Can I go on? Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. doctor. Proceed, yes. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, one way of sometimes identify the challenges is that uh, most of the time, some, I mean, early career researchers, precisely PhD scholars, once they, 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 they enroll in the program, uh, most of the time they have some kind of perception that uh, supervisors uh, to more or less, I uh, mean, undertake their, their barriers for them or to be able to more or less feed them with the whole information, it is not always the truth. Uh, supervisors are mostly embedded, always, I mean, I mean, find themselves with a lot of administrative works, too much load. So once you made your mind of undertaking a research, especially in the PhD level, uh, the, your expectation from your supervisor must be less, must be 30% over 100. Don't, don't project your supervisor to be able to feed you 80 or 70 percent, it doesn't happen. So prepare that in the initial stage, uh, you are you will be facing some constraints internal, even how you yourself to organize the topic, how you can even explain the objective of your team to your supervisor is even a quite challenge. Before I even approaching your supervisor, you should be able to read about the supervisor's profile, read about his direction of research, read about his papers he has published, then know the destination or should I say the path through which you would like to more or less, I mean, tilt with the supervisor. Because look, there are instances whereby in the beginning stage of PAD, a uh, student found themselves wanting along the way because one, the orientation of the researcher, the orientation of the supervisor uh, is quite superior and quite different from what the new student is coming in with. So when the student uh, is unable to more or less tune in line with the supervisor's line, always there is a kind of friction where supervisors and uh, students find themselves difficult because they think that maybe the supervisor is not doing the right thing or the supervisor uh, is giving them tough time. Not, you should be able to adjust. You should be able to adjust, tune yourself, read wide about the supervisor's profile, read wide about, uh, I mean, the, 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 the research domain of your supervisor. So these are components that are embedded in the internal challenges of research journey. So having been able to establish or know the consequences ahead is a way of, I mean, giving you a strategic way to be able to navigate yourself. And then beyond the internal factors. Doctor, sorry uh, for interruption. Sorry for interruption. Are you changing the slides? Yes, I will change the because slides. Because it, it was in second slide. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, go ahead. Come again. Yes. Yeah, yeah, now we changed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, let me just complete a brief over here. So uh, in all what I'm trying to make over here that the uh, research challenges are categorized into internal and external. So the internal one, like I said, expertise, I mean, office space, for students and researchers to be able to find themselves. That is the environment, the environment that you find yourself. Is there any space for people to be able to undertake their research? Is there available resources, softwares? I mean, things that have direct 
impact on the researcher. And we have other uh, factors, which we call it external. That is, uh, most of the time, even though those external factors has direct, but it has indirect effect on the researcher. That is, even though beyond that, the researcher can still penetrate through, such as, uh, is there some funding? Some funding opportunities acquired an external, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, resources to the, the researcher. And I mean, collaborations, partners, I mean, networks, these are all external challenges where, uh, I mean, potential researchers uh, should be able to be aware of in as much as they want to undertake their research journey. So in all, these are some of the classical examples of the challenges that we are going to look in the subsequent slides. So now, having been able to establish the specific challenges that await you as a researcher, then what are the possible ways through which researchers can overcome or minimize, or if you want to get rid away of these particular challenges? One of the most important component in terms of strategic decision of a researcher is time management technique. Why am I saying time management technique? In fact, uh, even if you are even writing, you want to write an article for publication and you are someone or you are someone who always doesn't, I mean, have your itinerary. If you are unable to have itinerary for your research process or for your research tax, you will be always facing difficulties in terms of completion time. So time management must be able to guide you as a researcher throughout the journey of your work, whether you are writing dissertation or you're writing a conference paper or you're writing a paper for journal publication, you have to set a time. You need to have a time schedule through which each of the phases of your task. For example, let's say you are you have been able to maybe conceive a research topic where you want to write a paper, you have seen a special issue, and then you realize that there is a trending topic that you intend to write a topic on. You want to write a paper on. So you should be able to now have your research design. I mean, outlining the specific aspect of the of the of the of the paper. I mean the structure of the paper. When am I supposed to be able to establish my research gap? How long should I be able to take one week to be able to read few articles to be able to come out with the research topic? Beyond establishing the objective of your study or under or getting the the research that you intend to embark on. How long will I take to be able to do the introduction? How long will I be able to take to do the, I mean, methodology or literature review? So the structure of your study should be able to enable you to establish a timeline that will guide you to be able to finish on time. Because look, procrastination always creates inconveniences for researchers. Why am I say procrastination? The more you don't, the more you are unable to pay attention to the, I mean, timelines of your tax, the more your conceptual idea become obsolete. Because for example, there are instances when journals that are, for example, A, B, D, C, A category, B category journals, especially even A, most of the times, when you submit a paper and realize that uh, there are extant papers similar to your team, within the desktop, they will just reject it. Even B category, I used to review for cogent business management many times. There are instances when, I mean, paper submissions are more or less, I mean, have been published even within the same journal and even other outlets as well. So most of the times, not that the paper is not good or the paper doesn't fit to the journal. There are instances whereby the author or the authors might have delayed. 
about the topic that they were to submit. Perhaps they waited. They, they might have had this idea way back a year ago or two years ago. They delay in writing this paper. And the more you delay in the paper, the more your concept becomes obsolete. It means that, I mean, researchers are searching for limitations in the literature. They are searching for gaps. And other people in other areas or in other geographical areas are doing similar work. So when your paper delays longer period before you finish executing, you realize that after submission, the concept has already been published and you are unable to establish the current submission research gap and the previous submissions, their research gap. So when it happened this way, prepare that you receive desktop rejection at a goal. So it is important that whenever you are able to identify a research niche, or, I mean, a novel topic, don't delay in execution. If you are using a team network to write this paper, know how you'll be able to, I mean, uh, uh, establish the timeline for each participant to be able to contribute as soon as possible. If not, uh, you will be disappointed because these are some of the instances where early career researchers get upset when they make submissions and then within the desktop rejection, they feel bad. Don't feel bad. It is part of the journey. Because it is part of the journey. When you are aware of these informations, you are able to come out with innovative ideas to navigate yourself. Then the most second important aspect has to do with resource optimization. Why am I saying resource optimization? You know, uh, it is important to understand that resources such as office space, access to data. There are instances whereby your institution or your college that you are pursuing your career, your research career goal, may have all the necessary facilities. They have library, their library is well robust. You can assess data, Scopus database, Web of Science database are available for you student to be able to assess materials. You need to be able to make maximum use of this information because there are instances when, for example, early career researchers who mostly have family, you have kids and then you are finding it difficult to even read at home. You are finding it difficult to even prepare or undertake any meaningful research activity at home. Once your institution is having this facility, office space for faculty or office space for PhD student, make use of this, I mean, facility. You have access for attending conferences. You have access of funding to publish your paper in open, I mean, open access journals. Make use of these facilities because when you exit in this institution, your next institution, you may not be able to find this kind of facility available. So if at the moment you have these resources available, office space, access to data science, access to, I mean, I mean, conferences, access to publication activities, you have to commit yourself, make use of this, uh, I mean, opportunity. Because for example, I, I made, I would say, I made a lot of, I mean, uh, should I even say I optimized my 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 former institution where I did my PhD and my master because over there in Czech Republic, uh, the institution is purely I mean a research institution. So, uh, PhD students are allowed to publish in uh, I mean open access journals where uh, they will be funded. The the faculty will fund your paper. Possibly, if the journal is in Q1, Q2 journal, they will fund it for you. And irrespective of wherever you want to, I mean, disseminate your research paper, I mean, conference proceedings or whatever, the university, I mean, has this avenue for you to be able to pursue. So, as a uh, early career researcher, whenever you find yourself in any environment that has at least some significant of commitment to research, don't downplay that kind of resource. Never downplay that kind of resources. So make use of available resources within your jurisdiction. And more importantly, 
collaborative effort and networking is quite important. Collaborative effort. What do I mean by collaborative effort over here? Uh, you know very well that there, there, there will be instances whereby, for example, I I'm, I'm always in the marketing bias, I'm in the marketing domain. So most of the times I have been writing articles related to sentiment analysis, topic modeling and other areas. I mean, FinTech perspective. Mostly I work, I do papers, I mean, in, in, in FinTech perspective. So most of the time when I want to do sentiment analysis, since I don't have knowledge in using Python, I'm always into, I mean, structure equation, PLSM, IMOS and other softwares. I'm not conversant using Python and then R to retrieve, I mean, uh, I mean, views to, add, to to retrieve opinions from the social media platforms. So anytime I'm intent to do such kind of study, I extend my network to people who have this kind of expertise, who knows how to use Python. Don't feel shy. Once you undertake a particular research team and you realize that there are instances whereby some area you'll be deficient in it. Don't fish out, bring that person on board, team together, and then you co-author the paper. So most of the times when you see my paper in sentiment analysis, there are part of the, uh, it's a teamwork. So those who are from the computer science background who are inclined using R and then Python, then uh, uh, they are in charge in retrieving those opinions for me to do my analysis. Likewise, when I'm also doing paper with those people from the computer science background, most of them, not all of them, are also conversant with the, I mean, the normal, I mean, structure equation. So I always take in charge in such kind of aspect. So within your institution, there are topics that you intend to implement. Don't think that you can control the whole faces of the article. There are instances fine as a single author, fine, but if you think that this novel topic may require some other people to, to, to join, do that. Because your limited, your knowledge may be limited in that particular topic. And when you are unable to implement those expertise that can enable you to complete this paper, then your paper will not be able to carry weight in, in better journals. So know that the kind of journal, the kind of theme, the kind of topic that you are preparing, make use. So optimizing the resources include expertise that you can tap knowledge from them. You can even rely on sometimes there are faculties where they have research assistants. You can enable these people to even help you sometimes your data collection or whatever auxiliary tax that you think this research assistance can offer, you can equally rely on them to be able to pursue your career goal. And it was, I was able to, I, I, since I jumped one point, funding opportunities. Uh, if you realize that your institution has funding availability for publication, or your institution can guide you to be able to submit, I mean, grant to the ministry, for a support, do that. Make use of this facility because some of us has passed through several institutions and we know when to make use of or to maximize, I mean, opportunities when it comes to research resources or resources towards research. And let's move to another important, and I would say, I, I always classify it as an initial stage of your research, that is dealing with theoretical ambiguity. Uh, there are instances when um, researchers or aspiring researchers during their journey or beginning with their journey of a particular topic for their thesis or for their article or for their conference paper uh, are unable to face uh, should I even say the theoretical gap of their work? Because when, for example, you are unable to establish an extensive literature or you are, able, you are unable to establish your theoretical underpinning for your study, uh, <laughs> prepare that your paper may not even move from desk review. It may not even cross desk review because once 
the editor in chief or the as or the handling editor happens to realize that your theoretical base is quite weak or your, th your theoretical base is not enough to support your current findings automatically they'll return your paper back to you and they'll write a whole lot of english to you that uh your paper doesn't it doesn't fit to this scope and blah 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 and we we wish you to find a different outlet uh most of the times it is about the theoretical underpinning of your work it is important to always understand that the particular topic you intend to for example recently when i came to uh, tashkan i am i recently intend to embark on uh, a project that i started in morocco here i'm trying to look at um uh the the working conditions of i mean of gig economy over here in in uzbekistan i'm looking about the platform economy uh what are, i'm looking about should i be say ethical consideration and sustainability ethical consideration and sustainability in the platform economy so currently this topic is what i, I have begun to pursue to see at the end of maybe a year i'll be able to complete this project so once you're able to come out so what are the supporting theories that if you intend to publish or you intend to send this paper to a journal what are the specific theories that you are supposed to establish to support your claim so most of the times your 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 research no your research idea is superb it's novel but when you don't have the grounds you don't have the foundation the theoretical foundation the supporting literature in order to give you a weight in order to give i mean value to the to the to the core concept they will not be able to i mean pursue your paper for you, especially if you are targeting ABS 3 journal or ABS 4 journal. I mean, for them, theoretical basis is so, I mean, relevant. Even not only top journals, even of late moderate journals, especially, I mean, ABDCC and uh, even B category, they are all much interested about the type of theory, the specific theory that is supporting your work. So, how can you be able to identify or I mean, do away with theoretical challenges. One, you have to be able to do a thorough literature review. If possible, especially if you're a PhD student, better do a systematic literature review. Read a lot, do systematic literature review, especially on your thesis, on your, on your dissertation, to be able to establish what are the gaps, what are the specific areas for further consideration. So, as a, in the PAD journey and you're able to do a systematic literature review, it gives you a, 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 should I mean, a smooth direction of your thesis, especially those of us who are always interested in, in, in survey research because I'm most, mostly into survey. So mostly within the PAD journey like this, if you are within the survey category, it is quite important in your initial stage, especially in your first year, know how to do systematic literature review to be able to identify i mean similar works that have been done specific concept that have been done specific geographical area that have done this particular study and what are all these studies talking about what are the specific similarities among them and the differentiation among them having been able to establish all these differences or similarities it is a way of giving giving you how to define your research gap, how to define your research goal to be able to have a smooth running of your dissertation. Beyond, within still the theoretical ambiguity, for you to be able to, I mean, uh, reduce the consequences of theoretical challenge, it is important to always seek for mentorship and guidance. It is also a fact that research uh they said our PAD journey is what is an independent work however seeking mentorship and guidance is a way of giving you the key to your PAD sources if you ignore mentorship and guidance not always that that's why I was saying that it's not always that the supervisor has time the supervisors may have 20 percent of time for you 20 percent maximum 
if I, I even said 30. I, my experience, I had 20%. When I just convert the interactions and other stuff, I had 20% of interaction. 80% supposed to be done by myself. I mean, re rely on other people, other, I mean, uh, I mean, eminent scholars or, I mean, emerging scholars to guide me and other stuff. So don't always put your pressure on the supervisor. The supervisor, you are not the only student under him or her. She supervises masters a lot, MBA students, executive MBAs, bachelor students. He has a lot of script to mark. So even meeting your supervisor could be once or twice in a month. So look at once or twice in a month, how will we be able to even be able to get information about how to even draft a systematic literature review? How to even come out with a literature review or systematic literature review about your dissertation topic? So always seek help. No people, don't always select people randomly. Look for people who are in your Dr. domain. Dr. Jibril, sorry for the uh, interruption. Uh, we want to also give some time to the audience for uh, specific questions to you. So okay. if you kindly proceed. Um, OK, OK, finish OK. Quickly. OK, then I have to finish, then we can move on to question and answers. And uh, let me also move ahead. Uh, Important another important aspect of the theoretical ambiguity is that always you need to be able to reiterate that is refining your research question and methodology consistently. There are instances whereby you may show your research instrument or your methodology, the structure of your methodology to your to I mean, to a scholar or to an experienced person. The experienced person may try to give you amendment of your research question. So this amendment may also affect the kind of theoretical underpinning of your study. So always know how and when that your methodological uh, questions or instruments must be inconsistent with your literature review, because if what you have stated is in variance with the set of questions that you are going to implement, then you may have difficulties as well. So in order to avoid difficulties in theoretical, always pay attention on know when to refine your research questions. Then let's move to another interesting part here. Uh, <clears throat> why is it a need for researchers to pay attention to case studies and insight from citizen scholars? One, you know, personal anecdotes, that is narrative, stories and experiences shared by established researchers are a way of inspiring early career researchers. So as an early career researchers or even institutions, for institutions to be able to, I mean, improve or grow the research base of the institution, it is important to always undertake this kind of engagement where they invite, I mean, established researchers to be able to give their, their I mean, past experiences the failure, the sources that they have encountered. So learning from these people are a way of overcoming contemporary or early career researchers, their future challenges or the challenges that await them. And last but not the least in this aspect here, as a researcher, always make sure you are able to undertake the concept of resilience and perseverance. If you realize that based on, I mean, the experiences I had from this researcher, the way he was able to narrate his past or his stories about his failure and success, is a way of even giving you some resilience and motivation during your challenging time. So it is important to always, as a researcher, Try as much as possible, liaise with experienced persons. Let them tell you their stories. If you don't hear their stories, you don't know what is really in the game. You don't know what is really in the ecosystem. So always prepare to hear stories about the failures and success of some researchers. So another most important slide over here is uh, how do we cultivate the supporting environment for to make our research more smooth? One, academic institutions are supposed to play a major role over here, such as enabling environment. It is important that institutions that are aspiring to become research-based 
institution must play a major role in terms of supporting their researchers. Two, fostering interdisciplinary collaboration. Of course, whether I'm as an institution or as an individual researcher, it is important to of late collaborate. Because nowadays, for me like this, I like interdisciplinary research because even though I'm marketing, sometimes I write papers with HR, people in the human resource management domain, and those especially in the financial department, those in the finance department, I have been writing papers with them based on consumer behavior point of view. So in as much as you, you, you extend your network to, I mean, broader, I mean, scope, it's a way of overcoming possible challenges that you are likely to face. Because the more you are able to, I mean, interact or involve in interdisciplinary collaborations, the more you'll be able to know, I mean, ideas in different research domain. So, so that even most of the times when you're even applying for, I mean, external grant, these are some of the qualifications that they inquire. Because I remember uh, last two years I was in Morocco where I, I applied for a project and during the preparation stage, uh, I was asked to, because I was the invest, lead investigator, I was the principal investigator for the project. And the requirement is that there should be interdisciplinary team. So people from the IT background, marketing, finance, even geography background as well. So most of the times, trying to work together in the form of I mean, interdisciplinary domain helps you in your future I mean, grants application. And then another important thing I have to reiterate again is creating mentorship program for junior researchers. This are some of the I mean initiatives that institutions, institutions, organizations that are really into research or that are embracing research must supposed to do. They should be able to create mentorship program for junior researchers. Doing that is a way of giving motivation, inspiration to contemporary researchers. Then the last point, but not the least, has to do promoting culture of sharing challenges and lessons learned. Uh, there are instances, the last point is very crucial, especially uh, here, avoid, I mean, uh, I mean, what do we call it? Uh, selfishness. Let me use the word selfishness over here. You know, as a researcher, the more you are able to share your lessons or you share your challenges that you are facing, the more you are able to get solutions or strategies to be able to, I mean, mitigate this kind of challenge. So if you're a career researcher and you're not sharing what you are facing, you will always be constrained in your future works. So always open up. It doesn't matter whether you are a final year in PhD, you are a beginner in PhD, or you are even an emerging scholar. The more you open up, the more you, you, you are able to share your challenges, the better it is for you going forward. Because look, innovations are not static. Innovations are dynamic. The more you share your view, the more you share what you are going through, the more you share even your topic, the more you are able to get the, the direct shape of your topic. So, for example, most of the time I do share my topic that it doesn't it doesn't matter if I want to. For example, like I said initially, I'm intent. I have started embarking on a project about the ethical consideration and sustainability of platform economy over here. I I did similar projects in Morocco. So recently, I have to interact with other people, stakeholders, scholars who are within this. I mean, technology mainstream to give me even more insight on how I can direct the topic in the context of Uzbekistan. So sharing your topics, sharing your, I mean, theories, it's not a way somebody is not going to steal your idea. We should avoid that. Don't just say that if I give my idea to this person, he will let his student or he will let his, he, he, he will let his team write a paper on that. It doesn't matter. It's a way of even gaining experiences on how you can be innovative because the more you are innovative, the more you become also a more, I mean, explorative. So sharing your, your past or your current information is a way of boosting your morale in your research journey. So to conclude, to conclude this seminar, it is important to recognize that challenges are inherent part of our research journey. However, with the right strategy, support network, and resilience 
mindset, these challenges can be overcome. And last but not the least, by learning from experiences and insights from seasoned scholars and emerging scholars, researchers, PhD scholars can navigate their own research path more effectively and contribute meaningfully to their respective field. So thank you for your time. This is the excerpts of the references I use for my presentation. So thank you for your time and may I know the possible questions? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jibril. Uh, uh, thank you for sh uh, your shared experience as a researcher, as a reviewer, uh, as a PhD student as well. I, I am sure that there will have a lot of important <laughs> insights for us to overcome our future research challenges. Thank you. Now, uh, we have a couple of questions to you. So probably Dr. Anand is going to ask a question. So Dr. Anand, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Abdullah. A wonderful uh, presentation, insightful presentation. So I have a, a question. Like you are, since you are talking about the research challenge, nowadays uh, most of the challenges are, you know, so the solution is for artificial intelligence. Nowadays, artificial intelligence are playing a big role in uh, solving our uh, challenges, including research. Now my question here is: now artificial challenges we can use it in various dimensions. When it comes to research, so to what extent we can use artificial intelligence ethically, I'm double quoting ethically uh, to it. meet the challenges of uh, research so that Thank it may you. be useful or guidance for our young researchers. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much, Dr. Anad. Uh, using AI tools in research now, there is nothing wrong with it. It's all about how you'll be able to use it ethically. So with ethically here, I will rather always try to encourage my researchers that do use it to guide your the structure or the composition, not the content, not, I mean, the test. Because, for example, there are many universities, turn it in, can even, can, can, can detect, can detect AI. For example, my university here, if you use AI to write your literature review methodology, oh, we will catch you just because our uh, Turnitin is embedded with, I mean, AI software. So we are easily to detect, I mean, people who use AI. So with the AI, I encourage researchers to use it wisely, but don't use it in the form of writing the whole test for you. You can decide to, for example, uh, let's say, you can decide to, I mean, uh, provide your research gap or the specific research objective. Perhaps AI can decide to even recommend possible theories, framework that you can use to select for your work. Are you getting it? So I have been using AI as a guide, not to rely my entire content for suggestions. For example, what are the possible theories that I could rely on to be able to underpin this study? Are you getting it? And most of the times, AI could also perhaps guide you in terms of establishing some, I mean, gap in the literature as well. Let's say uh, I intend to perhaps undertake an ethical consideration and sustainability issues in the platform economy in Uzbekistan. I try to see other works. Of course, AI can establish some works that have been done within this context and perhaps within Central Asia or within even Uzbekistan to know whether there are available even materials or available work similar to what I'm doing. If there are available work similar, what are the specific, I mean, limitations of other previous work? AI could equally perform such kind of function, but that does not to say that you should take the whole test or the content from the AI. The AI could give you specific limitations based on the intercept of papers that they have gotten. So please, uh, <clears throat> I always, more or less, I don't discourage people, but I rather, I mean, advise them to avoid, I mean, unethical issue. They should rather use it as a guide for suggestions. Because for example, uh, there are instances whereby a particular topic, you 
you can you can seek for clarif clarification whether misapproach would be the ideal for you to be able to complete the study. Of course, the AI could initiate or suggest the line of the work, how you should be able to move the work, whether indeed the suggestion. After that, try to also compare the suggestions with other articles that you have al already intercepted in your research. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think um, we have no time to pick any more questions. Uh, actually, there is another more exciting sessions waiting for us. So, uh, if you uh, excuse me, I will just uh, switch to our uh, first speaker, uh, uh, Professor Dr. Shatish Kumar. He will be teaching. Um, uh, he will be talking about building a strong research network, leveraging collaborations for success. So, uh, uh, Professor uh, Kumar, the floor is yours, please. I hope I am audible now. Very yes, much, yes, professor. Yes. Very much. Yeah. Thank you. My sincere apology for technical issue, which no, happened. Doctor uh, uh, Jibril, can you please uh, uh, stop sharing? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Professor Kumar, we can hear you, uh, but yes, you need to yes. share your slides. Mm. I hope my my yeah. slides are visible. Yes, visible yeah, yeah. now. Yes, we can right. see. Yes. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me for this, you know, excellent talk series which uh, your college has started. Uh, special thanks to Professor Anand for having me here for this session. Uh, uh, after a very insightful talk by my colleague. Uh, I'm going to share with you some uh, tips for how when he was talking about uh, collaboration. So I'm going to talk about uh, what does academic collaboration is. And uh, based on my experience of last 15 years or so, I have tried to build that into smaller tips. So I don't have a very big presentation to talk, but uh, I will definitely have some points for you to uh, talk about it. So idea is academic uh, networking. We all are. Uh, aware of we are living in a world where you know networking as we rightly say is your net worth right so uh, networking is has become a key uh, to you know a skill which it's a skill I, I will say you know which as a researcher you need to imbibe it so when i'm saying it is a skill it means you know it can be learned it can be practiced you know and it can be further refined and it's an ongoing thing you know you have done uh, one time academic networking doesn't mean you are good at it so it's a continuous process as you move in your in your academic progression you know so uh, it it helps you to take forward so my uh, my presentation will start will be talking about uh, quizzing this question what actually academic networking is uh, is it publishing a paper with an academic networking going to a conference and meeting people is an academic networking or is it more than uh, you know that? Uh, so that's what we need to answer actually. So I'm following somebody, you know, the stalwart of my area, uh, my research area on LinkedIn or Twitter X or any other platform. Is that also part of academic networking? So that is precisely we need to know what actually it means. So I have tried to thought of in a in a very academic manner what could be the uh, pinpointer as we say definition of you know. Uh, what do you mean by academic, uh, you know, networking? So it's basically linkage of people, you know, from uh, education related communities, especially it's not a social networking where objective is to socialize here. Objective is something very unique, right? And objective is very common. And uh, 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 the linkage is for a collaboration. So collaboration is when you want to work together, when you want to contribute to society, when you want to become a member of any community which is academic in nature, so you are, you know, keep, uh, you know, by taking first step towards, you know, reaching that idea of academic uh, collaboration, right? So why academic networking? This is another important uh, question which comes to our mind. I hope uh, my slides are perfectly visible and moving. Yes. Not moved yet. Still, we are in the first slide. Is it not moving? Uh, no. it, why, why academic networking? No, academic networking. The first slide we are in. 
Oh, you can try. It? Yes, now moving. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Great. Is it now? Yeah. So the, yeah, I'm now here. my academic oh. networking. Yes. Make yeah, it full so screen, it, professor. Make it full screen. Yeah. Is it not full screen as of now? Take it. Okay. Let me let me try again. You know. Should be full screen now. But not yet. Not yet. Uh, how come I, because you know, I can't see, uh, you know, once I share it. So yeah, any, any. I think it's uh, fine. You, you you can proceed. We can see. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. okay. So I think uh, the font, uh, even not, not much content is there on my slide. It's so, fine. Uh, so basically, the definition is like this. I hope the definition is visible linkage of people from education community which are collaborating for a common objective, right? So now the next question is why academic networking? You know, as I said in the introductory part, it has become a very uh, important and necessary skill. You know, uh, we are saying that you know you are good at it, but you know uh, you should be part of an academic network, which means you. You should be known by community, right? And uh, there are ways through which we can be part of that, uh, you know, academic networking. And uh, uh, we need to answer this question: Why academic networking, basically? So uh, I have a few points here. First, first, first point is that when you are a part of academic community, it improves your scholarship. Why? Because you get to uh, get to know the feedback of your work, right? People read your work. You, uh, you know, we always say two minds are better than one. So when you are in academic network, you have people from different background, different thought processes, cognitive, or, you know, from different geography, from different places, you know, different uh, disciplines, you know. So uh, idea is that, you know, once you're part of academic networking, you realize that you are improving yourself, right? So it could be a within the country or it could be outside the country or it could be multiple country that's a separate issue but the idea is academic networking so you have to start it some from somewhere and why you need to talk about is why because it improves your uh, scholarship second point which i have is that you know whatever as a researcher i'm doing right so this research is not my uh, you know own consumption it is for the society so when once I'm part of academic network, I understand, you know, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, what is the criticality of any literature, what is the criticality of any research work which we are doing. So when you share, uh, when you're part of academic network, you get feedback, you back, you get critical assessment of it. And whole idea is that, you know, whenever you are publishing any paper, report, thesis, or any academic piece of work. So you want that it should be used by people, right? So it's not for your own consumption, it's the consumption of society. So when you want to be disseminated, so it's, this is a point regarding dissemination of your work actually. So when you are part of academic community, you can easily disseminate. Look at the power of LinkedIn, you know, uh, you just post your paper, academic piece or project, and it reaches to masses actually. So that's why people, you will find, you know, most of the scholars, you know, academic people, they are part of, uh, you know, community like LinkedIn, ResearchGate, Academia, or many others which are there in the, uh, there. So uh, for me, I personally like LinkedIn because it has been, you know, widely used by scholars and even not only scholars, you know, interestingly, it's used by practitioner also. So when I'm doing any research on any topic, and I'm, uh, you know, sharing it on, you know, LinkedIn or disseminating it through LinkedIn that this is what people get to know about me. So they will come back to me if they have question. They will come back to me, you know, uh, if they really want to looking for someone who want to be collaborator with them. So that is another region or point why academic networking need to be there. Third point, right, which is closely linked to what I was talking just now. It allows you to connect with other and build a body of, uh, you know, contacts. So everybody count. It's not like, you know, you as an individual. I believe strongly, right, that, you know, research is not a uh, sprint where you uh, run fast, run alone, right? Research is 
you know, academic research is like a marathon. You have to do it again and again. So you need to create a team, right? You need to connect with the people. And when you are in academic uh, networking uh, setup, you will be easily able to build that contacts. You will be able to connect with people and you can easily share, get feedback. And, you know, as I said, you know, people read your work, they cite, they use it for different purposes. They invite you to talk like this. For example, this very forum where we are now, it's it's another way of, you know, getting academic community, uh, kind of, you know, networking. Because here we will be meeting first time plenty of new people. You will get to know who is who. Who is doing what, you know, so who is good at what and who is not so good at what, maybe we don't know, but as we always say that extract the good and leave the other things. So uh, academic networking allows you to connect with others. That's a very powerful tool through which you can connect with her ultimately because you're a part of society. So it's like a stakeholder approach if you have to talk rather than individualistic approach. You are talking to a uh, set of people. It could be student, it could be peer group, it could be, you know, faculty member, or it could be, you know, practitioner, industry people, or general editor, or conference organizer, or plenty of them. So all stakeholders are part of uh, that network. So this is another very important point why you should venture into this idea of academic networking. Very important for doctor, student, and young, uh, young scholar, this Point number four is very, very important. You know, mental well being. We all are, uh, you know, doing uh, when we, especially for doctors. So, doctor, uh, but Professor, your uh, slides are not moving. Still, we are linkage of people from, yeah, now it's going on, yes. Point four now we are, yes. Okay, so I'll keep in this mode only so that you'll be able to see it. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, now point four, yes. Yeah, so let me just quickly go through, you know, go back to it. So, this was the, my first point. It improves your scholarship. Second was that your research is not for your own consumption. It is for society. You are doing it. You are not doing it for your own, right? You're doing it for, uh, you know, others also so that, you know, society at large, community, academic uh, community as a large can use it. Third point, which I talked about was uh, it allows you to connect with others and build a body of, you know, contact. So you you can proudly say that I know X, I, I know Y, I know G in that particular area. Uh, having said that, it doesn't mean knowing is enough. Knowing will not help you. Uh, knowing will help you to connect, you know, with the people, right? Obviously, the value which you need to talk about, which I will talk about, uh, you know, few points or few tips how to do net academic networking shortly. So that's I'm just setting the tone of why academic networking is needed. This was the point number four, right, where I was talking about and especially true with, you know, young scholar, PhD student, master student when they are into research, you know, when you work. Uh, and you don't talk to each other, your your mental issue, you know, can be there. We often hear, you know, uh, researcher, especially PhD student being stressed and, you know, they take extreme step in the life, you know. I have come across plenty of scholars who are in distress, right? I'm not talking about financial distress here, mental distress. So once you have academic network, right, you can share, right? And you can interact with them. Maybe you are not able to find out what should be the appropriate theory uh, for your particular field after a you know, couple of try, you are not able to do it. Come on, doesn't matter much, you know, so you can talk to people once you have connected with you. That's why. So, for example, in socialization also, we talk about this thing, right? So, it's a way of socialization theory only that it helps you when, once when you are in stress. Like, for example, even for a faculty member, right? So, you have a lot of administrative responsibility and you are not able to you know, push research or pull research this year and your performance review is coming. Right. So you can talk to, you know, academic network. Can I be part of any project? Can I help and contribute so that you can by sharing? Once you will share, you will give the solution. So for having a good mental well-being, this is very important that you should be part of a community. It could be a association. It could be a group in the, uh, in the organization. And it's very easy nowadays, given that we are in a digital space. So you have WhatsApp, you have other forum where you can see that who is the person who is working in that particular area. 
theory, method, you know, concept, you can talk to them. You easily get uh, and, and, and help from people. And believe me, uh, we need to, when we are an academician, always start with a proposition that all people are good, right? That should be your hypothesis to start with, unless otherwise proved, right? So uh, never start, uh, never think that academic community has, uh, academic ne uh, network has not paid you well in the past. Doesn't mean same thing is going to happen, you know, uh, in future also. So it's like, you know, give a try again and again. You talk to people when you want to be, especially a doctoral student, you know, they keep on, uh, uh, you know, stressing themselves and then sometimes they take extreme step, could be leaving the program or sometime, you know, very, very extreme step, you know, people take like, you know, ending their life also. That's not a very good sign as an academician or an academic community itself. So uh, academic networking can help you here when you are into uh, this type of sort of. So that's why another region you want to you want to vent out, you want to speak. Academic networking should be there. Point number five, very very important, right? Even if you are a new scholar or you are a young researcher just finishing your PhD and you know the people in the academia through network, you have met them in the conference, you may have a third paper with them. So you need reference, you know, and, and we know the uh, today's world, the recruitment is not by more advertisement, it is by reference, right? Referral system, particularly everywhere, because it gives in a confidence to organization and dean of the school also that, okay, if you know, Satish know somebody and he's recommending and, uh, you know, Satish has some good rap with the dean in mind. So, uh, you know, it, it is always considered as a good point. So it, it, this is another tangible benefit I'm talking, you know, we always look for a tangible benefit in the life from anything. So please note that if you are a early career scholar, just finishing your PhD, you should be part of academic network because it may help you, it can help you to get your first job. Or even if you are a seasoned academician, you are looking for a change because of some personal region, or maybe the climate of that particular place is not suiting you. Academic network can help you quickly, right, sometimes. So they know that, you know, you share, here is the position. I can recommend you, I can refer you, you can write your reference letter, you know, that's how you should look, uh, you know, academic networking. So I, as a finance, uh, you know, background person, always say academic networking, when you invest, you have to invest time, right? So it's an investment, it's not an expenditure. Please do not consider academic networking when you're consuming, talking to people, going conferences, right? Apart from money, it is the time investment which is most critical you are doing. So when you are giving time to your network, investing time in network, they certainly pay you off later maybe, you don't know, maybe immediately, maybe two years down the line, five years down the line, or maybe 10 years down the line. So that's how I should, I take academic networking as why it is needed. Now, the question is, you know, uh, having said that, you know, academic networking is important. We all understand that all five points I have summarized. And by the way, these were not the only five reasons why you should do academic networking. Uh, there could be multiple more reasons, but that's how they come to my mind and then try to, you know, uh, pen down or, you know, write them, you know, quickly. Now, the question is, this is like a... Uh, how to develop academic networking. Is there any method I follow and I become a part of academic network? To some extent, yes. And uh, step you have to take, you have to come out your comfort zone, write people, talk people, attend conferences. So I'm gonna go give you some tips, you know, which has worked for me and which has even quick work for people to whom I have talked, which are part of my academic network. And sometimes, you know, you can, and it is very, very easy given that, you know, uh, the age we are living now. We are living in an age of, like a, you know, uh, uh, digitization where physical presence is not at all required. Virtually, we are talking, look at uh, this power of technology, what we are doing here. Right, so imagine this sun, the same session if was to be planned five years, 10 years ago. I mean, plenty of issues, but it's so quick now, so easy now. That's how you should leverage, harness the power of digital world. Being as a scholar, uh, you know, we all understand the companies are using digital digitization. As a scholar also, we should use uh, digital tools for 
connecting with the world and it's so easy writing an email uh, writing a message on you know linkedin following somebody on linkedin sharing and you know talking to people over conversation having an idea it's very very easy easy in a digital age and also you can set up a one to one meeting probably with the people now very uh, you know uh, quickly thanks to covid which has you know further accelerated the use of this technology in academia in training and many other purposes so i'm going to talk, talk about few tips and uh, tip now tips number 1 this is very very important if you are a early career researcher and uh, if you are a phd student please do it right away if you are a faculty member not done till now please do so join an association or learned society of your interest it could be academy of management you know society of management british academy of management informs aies now look for what are the uh, you know best of best academy uh, association in your area and accordingly you you try to find out that where you can join and contribute and very important don't be a passive member people generally what they do they become member and then they just sit right be a very active member how you can be active i will talk about shortly in the uh, forthcoming tip so step number 1 take a step forward join an association those who have not done till now i will strongly advise you all go and search immediately after this session what are the association top most association for your area be you are from operations be you are from it be you are from management general management marketing you have american marketing association you know finance you have afa you have regional you have global level right all type of conference uh, you know association or societies are available be part of them i'm sure some of you must be thinking it cost you money right definitely uh, it's a money costing exercise for you but as i said if you really want to network you need to make an investment sometime it is an investment of time and sometime it is an investment of money itself but you know nothing comes free there is no free lunch as we say so you need to start with if there are free associations you know a free webinar do be part of that but if you want to be a permanent member of some societies like what i have mentioned here some of them are you know they are for example this some of them are india specific some of them are asia specific some of them are you know regional specific or maybe to uh, global specific go and try to identify this list is not an exhaustive one which i have listed over here this is just an indicative list which i have put into here which came to my mind just to set the things right for you and very very important don't just don't think that you have you are part of that association and you have taken the membership and it's done no i am a part of the academic network you need to uh, you know shout right you shouting here doesn't mean you need to really shout shouting here means you need to tell the people i exist right how can you establish your existence by contributing back to them telling them what is your skill set right so for example my previous speaker was telling you if you are looking for slr expert if you are a part of that association and let's say you are looking you can you can post your message there you can connect with the people you can find out who are the member right and what is their specialization what is their skill set what they are and you will find best of best mind of your academic area in those society association for example american marketing association aom so on bomb informs ais you will find poems for example for operations you will find fantastic top class scholar because they come and you know uh, contribute there so eventually you are a part of that bigger group you are you are a, you are by virtue a part of that you know uh, stalwart group only so you will feel elevated motivated you will feel like you are part of a bigger bigger group and uh, this may help you sooner or later in your in your career second this is very very important which sometime we if you are doing very good if you are not going start doing get involved at conferences right conferences why conferences bring people together and connect scholar and my take is very very clear here i'm not saying go and join any conference right you need to be very choosy right 
go to the top conference of your area. It's very difficult to get in entry into top conferences of your area, right? Sometimes you have to wait for two years, three years to get your paper published. It's as good as you're publishing an A, B, D, C, A star or A sometime when you're getting acceptance from AMA or Academy of Management or SOM or POMS, right? Because they are very rigorous in their approach. Having said that, I am not undermining the importance of regional conferences. Choose wisely. My advice here is choose wisely because it involves money and time both, right? Be part of those conferences which are organized by those society or academy. For example, you know, Academy of Marketing, uh, academy of Marketing Association, you know, they organize winter and summer conference. Similarly, finance, similarly operations, they all do annual or once in two year AIB, for example, if you are an international business scholar, Association of International Business, they do organize conferences every year in US, outside US, or sometimes it could be in Asia also, right? So be keep looking, once you're part of that, you know, society or those, you know, members, member of that, you always start getting communication. Right. Not only that, you also get communication, some workshop, webinar like this is happening. Special interest group, SIG, we call them popularly. So you need to be part of that. Be very active. As I said, don't be a passive member. Get involved in the conferences. Right. What is the benefit? Benefit I perceive here is and I do see here is that you learn before a paper get published, you know, uh, general is that, you know, once paper will be published, it has a life, you know, of review process, which can sometime be of two years or so. In that case, you know, you have to wait for long. But in conference, people go and straight fragile their fresh idea. Okay. As we say, fresh from the oven or, you know, fresh from the microwave. So go and, you know, uh, you know, see what people are researching, right? Be part of that SIG group, be part of that track. Pick and choose those tracks which are relevant for you. So every conference have tracks, marketing con track. Within marketing uh, track, it is consumer behavior and you are a consumer behavior scholar. Go and attend that. You will get top shot people also, you know, over there in form of keynote speaker, in form of, you know, workshop, in form of any other talk series, or they handle your paper. Imagine if you are presenting a paper and top scholar of your area is part is, is a part of your jury or discuss, discuss, paper discussion. So you will get plenty of benefit out of it. So please get involved in conferences. And my advice to young scholar is do not compromise with the quality of scholars, uh, quality of conferences, right? Do make sure that you should have a target in mind. Next three year, five year, I will attend AMA or any top conference of my area. You will see how richness is there, how great ideas, new idea, novel idea, new methods are talked over there. So this is tip number one. Tip number three, which is very, very associated with this is take workshop, right? And it is very easy now. Now, given that earlier, you need to go physically. Now look at the power. We all are connected. I think close to 100 people are pa part of this webinar as of now. See, look, you may be in different part of the world in different time zone, right? But you are able to make, make it, right? With the power of technology. And now, uh, you know, this is very quite a frequent phenomenon. Take opportunities, you know, uh, attend conferences. Not only take uh, opportunity of attending conferences, but also you should be part of member of sharing group, knowledge sharing group. Doesn't mean that you always go and attend it. You should also do such type of, you know, uh, sessions like uh, my previous speaker was also highlighting. Share, when you share knowledge, you create more knowledge, right? And that is the motto you keep in mind. That's the benefit. One very important benefit, if you are good at anything, let's say, you know, PLS, SCM better, a particular method or, you know, methodology, theory. Once you will do those workshop and knowledge sharing opportunity, globally, you will be known because nowadays boundaries are not there, in particularly in this digital world, no boundaries there, right? So every people from every continent will be knowing, okay, there is someone like you who know that method, right? And as you can see down, I have written it, tip here, right to the other schools, right? For example, you are not able to get an opportunity to, uh, you know, be part of that workshop knowledge sharing group. What you can do, 
how see very small efforts can take you to academic networking uh, let us say your paper is not accepted in a top conference don't get disheartened right you have a paper write to the dean dean of the school faculty group of over there discipline head over there for example it could be dean or head of the department and tell that i am so and so and i have worked on this particular paper using a unique method unique theory unique finding i want to share it with your faculty do it right away right so you know people all people are very receptive of such idea particularly i have seen you know i keep on getting invited and you know uh, based on time uh, time availability i always honor those you know invitation as as if the case may be so look at it it's all mindset issue academic networking right you need to come out from your comfort zone prepare your slides prepare your session right definitely investment is there roi will be there you don't know while you are talking and giving that session you may get a new collaborator when you are uh, doing such particular talk series with in a particular school right it's very difficult for me to fly and uh, to usa and give a talk right because it costs to both party not to me only them also but it's very easy i can do that from sitting uh, here in india central india i can do it anywhere please harness the power of this technology uh, digital yes personally if you had a chance to visit do not leave that opportunity go take trouble right take trouble of travel take trouble of staying away from your family right that's the trouble i'm talking here but even you will meet person in person right physically that has very different charm but by the time you don't get an opportunity do it virtually do it within your country within your uh, region and then go globally right as they say a domestic firm need to serve the first domestic market then only they go global right you should be known name in the in the in the india itself before you go outside in let's say in usa or middle east or oman and you say that you are a global company same is scholar making a scholar making a academician scholarly academician is a journey it's not a destination right you have reached professorship and you are done with it it's a journey you have to take it like a flow that's my take or two cent uh, thought on that point number 3 point number 4 develop a social media presence right i am not saying you be on facebook right i am giving you very very specific social media which are related to academia i don't have facebook account by the way right because you know i believe for me linkedin is more important than facebook right i use whatsapp very rationally but i use linkedin to best of two way to share knowledge to get knowledge right that's how you should look it meta x i'm not on meta uh, you know like facebook as i said it's not it's not bad that you are there but please note that more network you are on part of it you need to manage it you can't be a passive you know a uh, player over there also keep on contributing something in form of exchanging idea sharing idea connecting with people appreciating what people are doing right sending a comment you know that your paper is you know read the paper and then give comment you don't know that you know when that you know communication may convert into a longer time collaborative uh, work for you so develop social media presence but i want to give a warning also here a, a, a disclaimer also please be sure that you are not always on social media right because you attended this session and i said be on social media for the whole time you can't be on social media make sure that you divide your time every friday every monday 10 to 12 right you will be there and doing that job once in a week twice in a week you can plan your activity according to your schedule be active have something interesting to say and be yourself right do not copy what others are doing do not be in haste of what others be yourself is very very important your original version right that's very very important if you really want to be noticed by people right share government report but also write commentary what do you think that government report is talking about just don't share and you know for the sake of sharing write your own view that's how you will develop intellectually also academically network next point increase your participation over time right as you grow you know 
make sure you you have a habit of submit paper every year and try to attend the conference leading conference every year right that is sig special ed group if no paper pa participant uh, you know uh, you don't have a paper with you go as a attendee not as a presenter people sometimes think that if you i am not presenting a paper i can't go to conference good conferences top conferences have two type of registration opportunity one is for attendee second is for presenter right if you are not having a paper this year spend some money from your pocket right every month save some money or from your salary from your earning from your scholarship and try to make sure that at the end of the year you should be having a corpus which you use which you invest on yourself and go and participate over there another way to increase your participation propose yourself as a reviewer panel member right board of that review panel technical committee as i said join sig special interest group or committee for example uh, you know as a aib right they have a special interest group on method and you know a method you become a part of that theory become a part of that conceptual understanding emerging technology you know that you know how they can be used and applied in in academia and what can be the future of that try to be contribute idea is to share make your presence visible make that noise right that's what i was talking to you please note that you need not to make unnecessary noise you need to tell that a positive noise i'm, I'm saying here no negative noise point number 6 nurture your network right creating network is easy nurturing is very very difficult invest time in your network go and meet people right try to find an opportunity to invest time to there work on multiple project right with your network member you need to be a multitasker right that's the age we are living into that's how people those who are very productive that's what they share always that you know and i also be from my experience of last 7 8 years you know i keep on working i don't wait one project to end then i start the next one i keep myself busy throughout the year throughout the months of years where i take a very short break that this is the period but still you keep on doing it right the idea is that we know that you start a project it may take longer than what you was expecting so keep on rolling multiple project maintain connection right it's not like you know following somebody on linkedin that's done communicate make sure that you establish connection follow the connection on social media as i said keep sharing your working paper even let's say you have a idea you have a proposal share even if you are not a uh, if they are not your co-author share with them it's a very very good habit that let's say i met somebody in in conference right and i have a idea i don't want that person to be co-author with me or uh, as of now because i don't know whether he will be interested or not but i can always share that this is my idea can you give me feedback what's your view can you give me some constructive comment these are the way through which you can uh, manage your desk rejection which professor uh, from me earlier was talking to about that paper got rejected through this you will be so now you see the power of your network your network is not for only networking network pays you off as i was talking to you talk about yourself and listen carefully when others are telling you something this is very very important oftenly people you know make this mistake young scholar doctoral student that they keep on talking talking what it's good you tell your idea but also try to listen what others is saying is it of interest what are you talking to him or her make sure that you do your homework that whether it trust you uh, that uh, you know person other person or not it's not like you you know this that's why you are talking about it you need to know whether they are interested in this idea or not for that you need to do a homework carefully read the profile of professor right see what they are doing currently what method they are using and then pitch your work accordingly uh, to what you have done that will give very help you very important tip tip tips number 7 offer editorial services propose yourself reviewer early time you know be early as as much as you can once you are a reviewer right you will be noticed by editor and nowadays there are tangible award also like best reviewer award 
and you know special award for reviewer when you become reviewer tomorrow you want to become a guest editor and associate editor editorial board member if you are a reviewer then only you can go to step number 2 or 3 right this is the precondition especially in the top journal right and you will come to a point where you need not to ask people that i want you to be part of the, your editorial team rather they will come back to you and say that are you willing to be part of our team they will request you i am not boasting it to with you all i am currently involved in five six journals and as an associate editor believe me i have never applied to any of the position it all has come to me by invitation from editorial team or some references some academic network have suggested my name to them then they have approached me slowly progress so you will be noticed if you are working good thing you will also be noticed if you are not doing good thing but selection of whether you want to be category a or category b category a is doing good and category b is not doing so good choice is yours don't make noise negative noise try to make a positive contribution to the scholarship right don't be sarcastic what people are doing just follow what they are everybody has their own journey okay you are not uh, not required to be judgmental at uh, any stage of your career it's good when asked for the feedback give your constructive critical feedback right once you are part of editorial team you will have a opportunity to know the idea of other scholar are researching before it is published that's the benefit of being a reviewer once you review a paper you know it's not yet a published paper it's in under review so you know what people are doing currently on that particular topic for example our professor was saying on circular economy or digitization or ethical ethics in digital space all that right so be reviewer as early as you can it is a myth that doctoral student can't be a reviewer bearing few journals all of them are open to send an invitation to you know make yourself available as a reviewer right on your linkedin page that you are available for review right on your you know uh, whatever you are whenever you are communicating with some editor when you meet them in person tell them i am available for review this is my area of interest right that's how you learn grow and you relearn and you skill and reskill yourself right critical before you will get critical feedback this will help you to how to give critical feedback to others that's very very important uh, when you do this type of review number 8 i think i am moving towards uh, closer to my, my presentation be realistic this is also one mistake people when they become part of academic network they have a very very big big agenda to talk right it's good be realistic take a little step at one time remember not every relation can continue for long not every conversation which you are doing will result into great result in form of co-author or in form of a, a good paper right it's okay if you try you keep on trying right but if you are getting if you are not able to convert any idea out of last 20 conversation then you need to take a break pause and think what is going wrong why this is not converting into a result you need to see you you can't keep on investing investing and investing it should also give you some roi also return on investment right you need to talk about it you need to think about it right do not make snap decision and rule out certain individuals are as not useful listen to others if networking makes you feel dirty you are not alone some of you those who have already tested that you have worked with people and it hasn't worked with you right you are not the alone it is a part of the game right it's a journey where you may meet hundred thousands of people some may be of your mindset later you realize after few months this is not the kind of person with whom i should venture into perfect make a very very soft decision when you want to exit from that please do not carry the baggage for long you will burst some day that should not happen right do not this is very very important because people generally uh, you know fail in this aspect you need to be very very balanced about it now uh, this can't be uh, i can't give you any tip how to do it but only thing is practice learn 
and again apply the you know the the issues which you got in the last networking make sure that you learn do your homework understand person perfectly before you try to understand you know don't in the very first meeting propose that let's work on this topic try to make some conversation try to understand is this the person of same type which i'm looking for so it's like you know on a very lighter note i would like to say when you are selecting a girl for or your boyfriend for your for marriage it's same way you have to look hey academic networking also right it's not like that some people think i have i have to be transactional don't be transactional forever right people will catch you hold that this guy is transactional it's here for one paper if you are not repeating your co-author in your cv that's could be a very very dangerous sign right if you are repeating your co-author it gives you that you are loyal you are consistent to one person or a group of person having said that some of you might be thinking that i should not write whole life with one person then how i will grow my network keep on growing but it's not like you have 100 paper and you have more than 100 collaborator perfect it's okay if it works for you but my take is that you when you will work with the same group of people again and again in marketing we say i'm not a marketing expert but i learned uh, from marketing professor in uh, you know multiple time working with them they have used a concept called customer lifetime value so you have to look at a academic lifetime value network lifetime value rather than a you know just short transactional one time two time you are done and then okay bye bye to the networking no make sure that once you are networking with the right type of person you go along with that person unless there is some ethical concern or you know something is not matching with your you know a uh, thing so please take a point that point very very seriously Okay, this point i think i am repeating this i have already told you uh, concentrate on a common goal and synergy effect right try to bring down as an uh, you it should not be like that your your networking is not uh, yielding any result you should have a target in mind and that target should be common try to converge that one meeting two meeting three meeting sometime sometime it could be in very two meeting sometime it requires four five meeting you need not to be a great fan of each other remember or fully agree on your view of the world this is very very important it's okay to disagree it's okay to disagree when your networking is driven by shared interest it will feel more authentic otherwise as i said few minutes back it will be a transactional only right and since you are networking with a senior professor or senior colleague who is more expert or a name which is known in the market they can find out out very easily that this person is here only for some transactional gain of one or two paper special issue paper or something like that don't do that avoid that to the extent possible unless otherwise warranted do not neglect your peer this is very important networking doesn't mean that you are only networking with big name networking start you don't know and how that big name become big name actually with work only right 30 year ago 40 year ago people were not knowing about that particular person but today people are knowing because over the year the person has worked it takes a lot to make your name in academia right so make sure that you not only choose i will only work with a uh, top five professor of my area no that should be your long term goal start with people in your institution so you need to network horizontally as well as vertically doctoral student also faculty colleagues also senior professor also editor also within country also outside the country also within your school also outside your school also that's how you should uh, look into because school your school or college uh, you know colleagues know you better than somebody sitting in usa when you are meeting him or her first time so do not neglect your uh, you know uh, peers last point very very important do not afraid to make a first move because it's like unknown don't think what other person will uh, think when you will approach him just right don't have perception in mind pre made uh, pre made uh, you know thinking that this is 
this is going to work, this is not going to work. Just go ahead. Make a step and then learn. It's like you know the recipe how to cook a food. Unless you go to kitchen and take out ingredients and start cooking, you will not able to figure out what is the taste of that product or that particular dish which you have made. So make sure you take a first move. You have to start today, tomorrow or day after tomorrow. You need to decide when that today will be for you. That's very, very important point. Do and learn what works out and what do not work for you. Whatever you, things which has not worked in the last academic collaboration, learn from that and do not repeat those things again when you are again venturing into this. Sometimes, let's say your first networking attempt becomes failure. Doesn't mean you will not network. It's okay you be, want to be a solo author all the, all the time throughout your life. But as I said in the beginning, if you want to run long, you will need to run with people. If you want to run fast, run alone. That's how the story goes with sprint versus marathon. And as I said, your network is your network. So you need to invest in your network. And all of us are working for that network. Networking. Thank you and happy networking. I am open for any question which you have. And please note that uh, it's just a tips which I have given you. But what you need to do is you need to go on ground and start writing people. When you start writing people, do your homework carefully. Right. Understand that person. What is the taste preferences? Like in marketeer, they do before they launch the product. Same is as a, a collaborator. You need to understand who is the person next. Why he will, why he should venture with you as a collaborator? These all questions you need to ask before you pitch. And do not share in very first email that this is the paper I'm working with. Would you like to join? No, this is a bad way of starting your journey. Don't show that you are here. You, it's okay to be goal oriented, but it is not before you know that whether that person is interested in collaboration or not. How can you propose such thing? So should avoid according to me. How I should I take academic networking based on my little experience? I'm happy to answer any question. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Kumar. Actually, but it was very enlightened about uh, why we need networking and how we can proceed for networking. Uh, it's very, very important. So uh, we may take a couple of uh, quick questions. One questions I can see in the box like, uh, one SP, uh, audience has asked you, can network identify as your social capital? Yes, it is like, you know, nowadays social capital only, right? We are considering uh, that only. So uh, who are your, who are the people in your co-authorship list or the project with whom you are working? This determine your social capital nowadays. And when you apply for jobs, you apply for project grants, people ask with whom you are working, right? Who are the people with whom you are working? So my advice and very important point, someone has rightly pointed out, it's a social capital, but same time you have to be very careful that you don't venture with, you know, some people who are mischievous because in this world, every type of person is there, but don't go with this assumption that everybody is, you know, wrong. Start with the assumption that everybody is good, but be careful, mindful when you are networking, right? Uh, thank you, but actually we are uh, running out of time. Uh, one more quick question. Can, is there anybody? Okay, so, okay, then great. So uh, actually uh, we have uh, shared the link for your feedback. Please kindly fill this uh, feedback form and then uh, help us improving uh, this kind of platform in the future. So uh, now we are almost reaching at the end of the sessions. Now I will uh, uh, request uh, Dr. Uh, Anand, uh, who is uh, uh, the director of the Postgraduate Studies Research and Innovation Department at College of Banking and Financial Studies to deliver his concluding remark. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, and at the outset, uh, uh, I thank uh, uh, both the speakers today. They have uh, really made an excellent uh, contribution 
to enhance the value of our today's uh, presentation, uh, today's webinar. So now it's a time to draw the curtain on uh, this uh, very insightful and enlightening, enriching webinar. And uh, today we have witnessed uh, a remarkable exchange of ideas, insights, experience from our esteemed speakers and participants, shedding light on the diverse pathways to uh, research success. And it, is, it has been truly inspiring to see the passion, dedication, innovation uh, in driving the research forward. And uh, I would like to, on behalf of the College of Banking and Financial Studies, I would like to express our deep sense of uh, uh, gratitude and appreciation to our uh, today's uh, distinguished speaker, Professor Satish Kumar and Dr. Abdul Bashir, for sharing your valuable ideas, insights uh, to this uh, gathering today. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, rea really, you know, made a big remark. I can see uh, we can see the inf uh, 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 information in the chat box. Uh, everybody are excited and very, very much ex appreciative. And the whole uh, uh, credit goes to uh, both the speakers today because uh, because of you, we are able to achieve this. And uh, uh, as we depart from this virtual gathering, I think uh, let us carry the spirit of collaboration as uh, Professor uh, uh, Satish uh, said and curiosity and commitment and excellence in our research uh, endeavors. May this uh, connection, may the connection made today and the lessons learned today uh, continue to inspire and empower us in our future uh, academic and research excellence. And uh, this is uh, uh, an initiative by CBFS uh, as a part of our community engagement and our objective is like as the professor previous professor said it is uh, not just gaining the knowledge or sharing the knowledge so our our motive our value is there should not be any limits uh, for uh, sharing the knowledge so that is why uh, as a part of our capacity building of our uh, faculty members we do conduct similar activities as uh, technology intervened in between. So we made whatever we are sharing to our uh, faculty members. We thought we should make it open and we have made it in that way uh, open uh, international webinar. I'm very happy to note that uh, the uh, the participants number is increasing. Uh, today we have uh, around more than 110 uh, members uh, on live session and uh, we have got registration more than 500 uh, uh, people from 20 different countries. And what we do is we will record, we have recordings, we will upload this in our CBFS YouTube link and we will share the link to all the registered participants. And you can uh, again go back and see it whenever you want and so that you can uh, remind and implement whatever the speaker said in the today's webinar. And uh, this is not the end. Please stay tuned uh, with, the, uh, with us and uh, you please follow CBFS uh, social media. We have many more uh, uh, webinars to come. Uh, we are planning to uh, conduct meet the professor soon. And also we are also planning to conduct meet the editors. And previously we have already conducted how to conduct uh, case studies, etc. So this kind of uh, uh, knowledge sharing initiatives keep going on at CBFS. And uh, since you have already registered and you will be in, in our database and we will be in touch with you whenever we conduct such uh, uh, community oriented uh, academic in and research initiatives and this is the time to say thanks uh, to all the participants uh, and also the speakers and our college management for giving a support and also for extending all uh, guidance for conducting such events and let's collaborate and let's be in touch and uh, look forward to see you again in our uh, future webinars thank you one and all thank you speakers thank you so much Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. That concludes our uh, webinar today. Thank you very much. Stay well. Stay blessed. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.